Gentlemen, the draft is in the books. Eight new Cowboys on the roster. Did the Cowboys salvage their offseason with this draft? Clarence, we'll start with you. No, they, they, they didn't fill all the needs, all the holes. They had too many holes uh, coming out of certainly an offseason or free agency, which they practically did nothing. So you couldn't fill all the holes in the draft. But it was a start, and it was smart of them to move back in the first round. It was savvy to move back in the first round to gain an extra pick because, again, they had so many holes to fill. And, and to move back and get your guy and also get a starter uh, in Cooper Beebe, who I think may be the best draft pick they made at guard, that was a good start to trying to rebuild what you lost in offseason. But, again, this team is not more talented today than it was at the end of the season in Green Bay. That's still – uh, they still have room to make up in that respect if, this, if that's what they're trying to do. And I don't know if that's what they're trying to do. Yeah, I agree with Chill. I think BB is a great pick. And they kind of lucked out um, that he was there when, when they selected. Um, getting two starting offensive linemen is a big help for them because that was kind of the big question mark going into the offseason. But yeah, I mean, the, 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 the holes they're trying to fill are, are too wide to be plugging in with guys who've never played an NFL snap. So I, I don't think you, you can expect a rookie to come in and replace that type of production. But also, this is Jerry and the Cowboys we're talking about, and they're not done. I, just, I, don't, I get the feeling that they will still look to add veteran free agents, whether it's this offseason, whether it comes summertime after cuts, or even up to the trade deadline. This could be a team that really doesn't fill these voids, maybe until – close to mid-season. So it's agreed with Clarence. It's a start, but uh, did they answer all their question marks in three days? No. There was no way that they were going to. What do you guys think about the first-round pick? Tyler Guyton, the offensive tackle at Oklahoma. They made the decision to trade back, as you guys both alluded to, and that obviously adds to the, the stockpile of what they come out of this weekend with. But specifically with Guyton, what, what do you like about what he can do and how plug-and-play do we think he can be at that left tackle spot? Well, the, the plug-and-play is the question, but you, you, he's 6'7". he got long arms, former basketball player. You love that athleticism. Again, Tyron Smith was a top-10 pick. He wasn't a... 24th or 29th pick so I mean I understand the comparisons uh and what you're trying to do but it, it's it's father to think it's just gonna come in and beat Tyler Smith from right off the bat I mean Tyron Smith excuse me from, from right off the bat but uh I mean you, you you like the potential but again here's a guy who was no more automobile mentioned in Big 12 you know he wasn't as good in the Big 12 as Cooper Beebe was so you're, there's a projection here but the best part of the pick is that you don't move Tyler Smith Tyler Smith can be a pro bowl every year Pro Bowl left guard, possibly Hall of Fame type left, left guard in the vein of Zach Martin. And so now you don't have to try to move him to left tackle and you have your left tackle. When it comes to Tyler Guyton, the football player, uh, I'm not totally convinced on the pick. I like it a lot more at 29 versus, you know, they picked at their original position trading down. Definitely makes the pick feel a little bit better. Um, but yeah, I just, he doesn't have a long football history from high school, played just one year of high school ball bounced around a little bit in college. So there's experience, but not a ton. And as Chill said, he's, he's not some, he wasn't a big prospect. I actually didn't think he was, you know, maybe in that top six, top seven offensive lineman range. Um, but again, I picked 29 worth a shot and off the field with his family, his friends, the connection of being a diehard Cowboys fan growing up outside of Austin. Um, you can see the pride in him. And I just kind of watched him throughout his uh, introductory press conference on Friday. And when the cameras weren't on him, and he, I don't even know if we were paying attention to this, but he just kept taking deep breaths and looking up to the sky and looking around and letting the moment hit him. Uh, and when you've got players like that who are proud, they will play hard, they will work hard. And I think that's all the Cowboys can hope for. And Joni, you alluded to the fact that the Cowboys are likely not done with this offseason with acquiring players. One of the worst kept secrets in DFW right now is the likely return of Zeke Elliott. One of the most questionable comments, though, of the weekend from Jerry Jones was saying that he feels Zeke Elliott in 2024 is a starting caliber running back. Chill, I'll start with you. Yay or nay? Nay. It's all relative. <laughs> compared to who? Compared to who you have in your locker room, in your running back room yeah. now? Yes. Compared to the guys that have their running back room, yes, he's that starting caliber running back. But this is not the Zeke Elliott that we saw win two rushing titles uh, during his early time with the Cowboys. Uh, this is certainly a different than Ezekiel Elliott. And, you know, Jerry said a lot of things that were questionable because he, he talked about he liked the way Zeke ran toward the end of the season last year. 
Well, if you look at some of his numbers towards the end of the season, they weren't that good. But again, Jerry's selling hope. You know, just him, it was Jerry also talking about, we could trade for a running back in the middle of the season. We can still, we're going to add people. And the problem is saying we're going to add people in the post-draft for agency. Who? Hmm. I mean, the, 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 the people that could really help you are gone. You know, and they were signed in real free agency. And now you're going to post draft free agency and possibly looking to trade or add somebody maybe, you know, who gets cut, you know, or, or doesn't pan out some other team during training camp. But there's no one out there, you know, for you really to add to this roster. But the Zeke thing is real. The Zeke thing is happening. And it could happen this week, early this week. I, st- I think he can be a starter. Maybe, what, the first snap? And then you bring in Deuce Vaughn and or bring in you got a whole rotating committee. Why not? He can start at center. Um, (laughs) He he has experience now. He he has experience under his belt. Um, Listen, to to Chill's point, if they're available now, they are a Zeke Elliott level player. Yeah. At this stage of Zeke's career, that that the, the guys that are left that Dallas can go get are not going to help you that much. And just another indicator of how devalued the running back position is becoming. That a team that needs a running back didn't even bother to address it in the draft.